for rational expressions, we do multiplication and division before we do addition and subtraction. With rational numbers, if I want to add or subtract, we have to put our fractions over a common denominator, and that takes a little bit of work. So we do multiplication and division first. Now, the rule for multiplication, okay, straightforward, multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, you get your new rational expression. Of course, we're interested in simplification to reduce form, so we work that into the checklist. First thing we do, we factor each numerator and denominator. Then we use our multiplication rule, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. And we finish by just canceling out the common factors, taking care of those that cancel to a minus one. Now, with rational numbers, it could take something like 35 over nine times 10 over 42. Factor each term completely, so five times seven over three times three, two times five over two times three times seven. We multiply, which is just the same as extending your bar. I can now cancel, so the sevens go away and these twos go away. That leaves me with a 25 over three cubed, which is 27. Same idea when we work with polynomials and rational expressions. So, example, let's try 5x minus 15 over 4 times 16 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Factor each term completely. So this will go to 5 times x minus 3. 4 I can leave alone. 16 I notice 4 times 4, so this will cancel nicely. Then I have to factor x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, we do our work. Factorization here is x plus 1 times x minus 3. Put everything with a single bar. Okay, I collect my numbers together, so I have 5 times 4 times 4 over 4. Can cancel out 1, 4, so I'll leave me with a 20. Then I have an x minus 3 over an x plus 1, x minus 3. So the x minus 3's cancel, leaving me with 20 over x plus 1. There's no real check in our work. In homework or exam situation, you know that you've done things right if you have at least some things canceling out. Another example, okay, a little bit more complicated. Let's try 12 minus 4x over 2x squared minus 72 times 2x squared minus 11x minus 6 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Start by completely factoring each term. Now, going through these, in the first one, I know that I can pull a 4 out, which will give me a 3 minus x. You could also go pull out a minus four to get an x minus three. Okay, noting I kind of like to put all my terms with, okay, lead coefficient without the minus sign. So I would pull a minus four out here, but not a problem. Here, two x squared minus 72 looks like a difference of two squares, but you'll note, not a square, not a square. But if I factor a two out, I have x squared minus 36. That is a difference of two squares x plus six times x minus six. Then, okay, let's see. If I'm gonna work on these, okay, we can do a little bit of cheating by taking a look at the factors on these terms. So if I try to pull an x minus three out of here, that would mean I'd have to have an x plus one, and that works out. Here, if I want to pull out an x minus six or an x plus six, we'll eventually work out that the other factor has to be a two x plus one. Okay, if you don't like that, you can just go to the AC method or whatever other method you, you like. Now, these factor, okay, you can check those. So we start canceling. So what do we know? Okay, the four over the two becomes a two. This, okay, let's save this for last. The two X plus one doesn't cancel, so we save it. The X minus six cancels with this X minus six. The X plus six here is not gonna cancel, so we save it x plus one here, we save x minus three with a three minus x. Okay, we saw in the last part a couple ways to deal with this. We could just take it as a rule. If you have a minus b over b minus a, that's equal to a minus one. So they cancel leaving me with a minus one. That's gonna give me a minus two, two x plus one over x plus six, x plus one. Okay, we did a bit of canceling, so we know that's our check and our work. For division, Procedures are the same, we just use a different rule. That rule is, 
We take P over Q divided by R over S. We take P over Q and we multiply by the reciprocal of R over S, or multiply by S over R. To check this, okay, note here this is just going to be fractions inside of another fraction, as so. Okay, use parentheses to make it clear where the bars are. I want to take out the denominators. So to do that, I multiply by QS over QS. Okay, that's equal to 1. If I multiply by 1, we change our expression not at all. Now, multiplying through, we have PS over QR. That's equal to when we separate P over Q times S over R. Here I have the reciprocal of R over S as promised. Now, checking with rational numbers, let's try 15 over 28 divided by 20 over 21. Take the reciprocal, so we're multiplying by 21 over 20. Factor completely, so 3 times 5 over 2 times 2 times 7. 3 times 7 over 2 times 2 times 5. 7's cancel, the 5's cancel, leaving me with 9 over 16. Okay, we move up to a variable. So I'll take 5 over x divided by 10 over x squared. Reciprocal of 10 over x squared is x squared over 10. We multiply, we cancel, and I get x over 2. Moving up to polynomials, let's try 3x plus 4 over 2x plus 5 divided by 9x squared minus 16. Now note, 9x squared minus 16, not in fraction form, but not a problem. If we take any polynomial, that's a rational expression by putting it over 1. So anything over 1 is equal to anything. The reciprocal then is 1 over 9x squared minus 16. We multiply, then we factor completely. Now, if we factor, okay, this is taken care of, taken care of here. 9x squared minus 16 is a difference of two squares. When I factor this, we get 3x plus 4 times 3x minus 4. We cancel the 3x plus 4s. That leaves me with a 1 up top. What's left over? We have 1 over 2x plus 5 times 3x minus 4. For a final example, let's consider 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 over 9 minus 49x squared divided by 1 minus 9x squared over 3 minus 4x minus 7x squared. We multiply by the reciprocal, then we factor. Now we note in the denominators, we have two differences of two squares, so we can factor these immediately. We could use what comes out of here to help us factor the numerators. So over here, I'll have, okay, 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 goes to 3x minus 1 times x plus 1. For this term, I want to get the minus sign off of our lead, okay, so I want the x squared to have a positive term in front of it. So we're going to multiply through by a minus 1, or factor out a minus 1. So it's really 7x squared plus 4x minus 3. Now, that'll factor as, 7x minus 3 times x plus 1. Things are factored completely. Okay, I'll move this minus sign out into the front. Now what I want to do to improve our bookkeeping is to put like terms together. So for instance, I want the 3x minus 1 with the 1 minus 3x, 7x minus 3 with the 3 minus 7x. Then what's left over? I have an x plus 1 squared. Underneath, we have a 3 plus 7x times a 1 plus 3x. Now, these first two terms don't quite cancel. Okay, they cancel to give us a minus 1. If I have a minus b over b minus a, I get minus 1. So these go away. I have a minus, minus, minus. Okay, minus, minus is a plus. Another minus is a minus. So I'm going to be left with minus x plus 1 squared over 3 plus 7x times 1 plus 3x.